Please rise for the lighting of the new flame. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, all times belong to Christ and all ages. To Christ be glory and power through every age and forever. By his holy and glorious wounds, may Christ our Lord guard us and keep us. May the light of Christ, rising in glory, vanquish darkness in our hearts and minds. Amen. I need a torch, acolyte torch. And now uh, we will process singing hymn 207.
Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on this day, Lo, this is our God. 
We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Hear what the Spirit is saying. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and to the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to those of us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify 
that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sin through his name. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I remember the first time as a young man I read through the entire Gospel of Mark. I read, I chose that one as the first one to read because, well, obviously it's the shortest one. And I thought, well, I can get this done in a night. So I read through it and I got to the end, to those verses we just heard. And I thought, that's it? That's the whole story? What about, what about the appearance in the locked room? What, what about the conversation on the road to Emmaus? What about breakfast on the beach with Jesus? There are no resurrection appearances at the end of John's Gospel at all. What is going on here? I thought to myself, how am I supposed to get to know this risen Christ if it doesn't even tell me about Christ after the resurrection in this book? Well, over the years, I have actually come to the place where the Gospel of Mark is precious to me. I absolutely love it. And the reason that I love it is because it is so brilliantly constructed. What Mark does with the structure of the book itself is reveal deeper truths. And as we look at that structure and look at the things that happen and the order in which things happen in Mark's gospel, it reveals more and more to us about Jesus. That morning, the women got up early and they went to the tomb. And when they got to the tomb, they were surprised to find the stone already rolled away. And they looked inside, and what did they see but a young man in white? Now, this has got to be an angel, right? It, it, it's a young man in white out of nowhere, and what's the first thing he says to them? The same thing all the angels say when they appear. Be not afraid. Don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth. He is not here. Go and tell the disciples and Peter that he is going on ahead of you to Galilee, and there you will see him. And they left, terrified. It doesn't say that they went back to the upper room where the other disciples were and told them the good news. No, they left terrified and said nothing to anyone. These are the first witnesses to the resurrection, and they are frankly unreliable witnesses. They were so afraid, they said nothing. And that's the clue that allows us to enter into Mark's gospel and figure out what is actually happening here. And the, the clue is that, that they were unreliable witnesses. And they aren't the only unreliable witnesses. The Pharisees and the scribes, they saw what Jesus did. I mean, they were there for all of the big events. They saw Jesus feeding the multitudes in the, in the wilderness. And they saw Jesus healing the withered hand on the Sabbath. They saw all of these things. And their hearts were hardened. They did not believe that this was someone sent from God. In fact, they... They conspire against Jesus. Very unreliable witnesses. But it's not just the women and the Pharisees and the scribes. The disciples themselves were unreliable witnesses. They consistently don't understand what Jesus is saying to them, what Jesus is doing. Just earlier in the story, as they were coming into Jerusalem, this is right before that Palm Sunday triumphal entry. James and John came to Jesus and they said, Jesus, we want you to make us your right hand and left hand men. We want to be your advisors when you set up this new kingdom. 
they are still thinking in terms of an earthly kingdom. They're thinking that when Jesus gets to Jerusalem, somehow he will drive out the Romans and be set up as the new king of Israel. They just don't get it. Peter's not that much, doesn't do that much better than they do. Just before that incident, Jesus has revealed for the first time, and he reveals it three times, that he will be arrested and tried and crucified and die on the cross. And on the third day, he will rise again. He tells them all of this ahead of time. And they just don't get it. The first time he says it, Peter says to him, No, Lord, don't talk that way. You, you, that can never happen. Peter just doesn't get it. It's not just the, the named characters that don't get it. Jesus is constantly having to explain the parables to the disciples and to all the people that have followed Jesus. So where is the reliable witness? Where is the real, reliable witness to the resurrection? It happened. We know that it happened, and we know about it, so someone witnessed it. The women must have said something eventually, even though they were initially afraid. Where are the reliable witnesses? Well, in Mark's gospel, there are a couple of reliable witnesses, but they're not much good to us. There are the demons that's, that name Jesus when he casts them out. Not much good to us. And then there was the centurion who, on seeing Jesus die and the way that he died, said, surely this is truly the Son of God. So we need a reliable witness, and where is that witness to be found? And this is the turn. This is the key to finding Christ in Mark's gospel because Mark's answer to that question of who the reliable witness is, is you, the reader. We are the witnesses to the resurrection. And it's all there in the structure of the book. The book begins with that opening sentence, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That's the first sentence of Mark's gospel. And it doesn't fit with the second sentence. It's not like, you know, it, it's not like it starts an idea and continues an idea in the, in the next paragraph. No, it's just, it stands alone. And it stands alone like that, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ. Because it's the title of the book. Not only is it the title, it's the thesis statement. This is what this work is. The entire thing, the entire gospel is the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It began. And as you read through Mark's gospel, you see all the ways that Christ reveals the sacred, that Christ reveals God's love, that Jesus shows us how much God loves us and how God wants us to love one another and love God. That's what happens in Mark's gospel. And so he starts out by casting out a demon and by healing people and then teaching about God and then feeding the multitudes in the wilderness and then confronting the religious authorities in Jerusalem. That whole thing lays out all the ways that God shows up in the world through Jesus. And you are the reliable witness. You are the one who reads that gospel and gets it, even when the disciples do not. But it's not just about the book. It's not just about a bit of literary work. No, it is also what we experience here in this world today because we are the family of Christ. We are brothers and sisters, siblings in Christ, having been baptized into the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And so when you go into the world, 
you can encounter Christ today. And the way that you do that, why, that's what Mark tells us. Mark tells us all of these ways that we can encounter Christ in the world around us. We can encounter Christ when we see someone in need and God's love inspires us to compassion and care. We encounter Christ when we see someone who is suffering and realize that there, there is a sacred human being made in the image of God. And we encounter Christ when we are inspired to go forth from this place and to share the good news and to, and to, to work in the world to be Christ's hands and heart for this world that we live in. And when we do that, we bring Christ to the world and it, the, the wonder of it is that we encounter Christ at that same moment. When you bring God's love to the world, that is the moment when you experience God's love. And so, the story ends and sends you back to the beginning. The beginning where Jesus says, his first procl public proclamation is, repent for the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God has drawn near. Repent and return to the Lord. The kingdom of God has drawn near. It is here and available to us now. It is here and available in this congregation in Corvallis on April 31st, 2024, right now. And we will celebrate that this morning by welcoming two new sisters into this holy family. The very next thing that we will do this morning is baptize Amelia and Ingrid into the body of Christ. We baptize them into this community, this community that trusts that when we go forth from here, we go forth carrying that light of Christ, that love of God in our hearts, looking for ways to see Christ in others and to bring the love of God with us. And so now we'll switch gears and baptize some new Christians. My book. Thank you. All right, so you can stand right over here. And we need, there they come. Come on up. And you'll stand over here. Excellent. Hi, Amelia. All right. Continuing on page six of the bulletin. The candidates for holy baptism will now be presented. Do you desire to be baptized? Excellent. Now you. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? Will you, by your prayers and witness, help Amelia to grow into the full stature of Christ? Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? Will you, who witness these vows, do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? We will. Let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ 
and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? God the Holy Spirit. Will you continue in the Apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people? and respect the dignity of every human being. Let us now pray for these persons who are to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. This is a very special part of this baptism. I am pouring some water from the River Jordan where Jesus himself was baptized, commingling it with the water that we will bless here today. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Christ Jesus, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, 
be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Ingrid, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ready? Okay. Amelia, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon these your servants the forgiveness of sin and raised them to the new life of grace. Sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give them an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Ingrid, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amelia, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked as Christ's own forever. Receive this light. This is to show that you have passed from darkness to light. Shine as a light in the world to the glory of God, the Holy Trinity. This is to show that you have passed from darkness to light. Shine as a light in the world to the glory of God, the Holy Trinity. And now let us welcome the newly baptized. Proclaim his resurrection and share with us his eternal priesthood. The peace of Christ be always with you. Yes, they're excited for you. Ingrid. All right, when I do communion, I want you to first. All right? You, I'm going to invite them to come up with you. Come up on the right away, okay? All right. When we do communion, I want all of you to come up first right away, okay? And you get to have communion today. Yes, you do. All right. Uh, one, two, four, one. I want to do anyone. First, it's part of that whole, yeah, she's baptized now. This is it. Excellent. Oh, here, don't take one of those.
So my friends, one of the ways that we complete this ritual of baptism for these newly baptized Christians is we invite them to come forward first. So they will receive communion first before the choir, before anyone. The two families will come forward um, at the end of the Eucharistic prayer. So that's another thing to look forward to. And now my friends, wherever you are in your spiritual journey, however you found your way into this place, whether you are rich or poor, living in a tent or a mansion, whatever the color of your skin, whom, oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> See, you know, if, if I didn't have such an excellent team, who knows what would happen, right? And so, John, <laughs> Zachary is up there going like this. <laughs> You can't see him. Actually, he was very gently going like this. <laughs> All right. I was winding up into the Eucharistic uh, sentence there, the operatory sentence. But instead, we're going we're gonna to flower the cross. It is time. Are you ready for this? All right, kids, it's time to bring your flowers and put them in the cross. Turn around. Are you? Is it? Oh, all right, okay, well, it's time. Whoever has flowers, yes, come on up and put them in. You, they go in this side over here, right? And they put them anywhere you want. You just put it right through there, all right? And put it fucking down like this, like, right? yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. Here, good job. Okay, Amelia, you get to do one too. Awesome, grab a flower, grab three. Put as many in as you want. Emmerich, those will look pretty there too. You can put them both. Yeah.
Yeah, make sure the little ones get in there too. There's at least one little guy that. It, did he make it? Okay. Excellent. It's time for the big reveal. Now, will you all help help turn it around? Connell, can you help? Go ahead, turn it around. There it is. Thank you. And excellent. We have a couple of quick announcements. Here, here's one. We're having a bunch of fun up there, the Acolytes. So uh, it's a ministry for people of all ages, from young persons to not so young persons. And we would love to invite you to this ministry. Come see me, Cynthia Rodriguez. And boy, it's, it's just kind of fun being up there. Thanks. Thank you, Cynthia. <laughs> All right, I think it might be my turn again. Okay, wherever you are in your spiritual journey, however you found your way into this place, whether you are rich or poor, living in a tent or a mansion, whatever the color of your skin, whomever you love, whatever your abilities, you are welcome in this place and at this table. There is food enough for all. Come and be fed.
give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ 
and bring us to that heavenly country where with Mary, the mother of Jesus, and Duns oops, not anymore, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Thank you.
Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another. And you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. The wisdom of God, the love of God, and the grace of God strengthen you to be Christ's hands and heart in the world. In the name of the Holy Trinity, amen. Let us go forth in the name of the risen Christ. Alleluia, alleluia.